The Wuxin WX-1, a familiar design aesthetic out of Fort Collins, Colorado, the names to be a 3D printer for your desktop 3D printing needs. Is this a machine that you should purchase? Well, let's go over my experiences with it and arm you with some information to help you make an informed decision. Right here on 3D Printing Nerd. The WX-1 was unboxed on a stream not too long ago. The setup went well, and once I got the print to stick to the build plate, we called it good, and I left it to print overnight. What I came back to was, well, an incomplete Benchy. There's the Benchy right there. It doesn't look complete at all. I thought maybe the filament sensor tripped. Nope, plenty of filament. I look here, and the filament's been ejected. I mean, it's got a tip on it, so we know that that was in the nozzle. I was like, oh, maybe G-code thing or something. Um, it doesn't give me the option to resume a print. I, I can stop it. And so we're at a weird spot. I don't know what to do, but this is not complete. I'll have to slice it myself, most likely. We'll see what happens. I took the WX-1 home so I, it would be easier to troubleshoot. I started the same print again, just in case it was a random, non-reproducible failure. It seems to be printing well, and I stepped away to grab a snack. When I came back, it happened. The head slowly moved to the front left corner. The extruder started backing out the filament and then pulling it back in. Then it slowly started moving towards the model. It was at this point that I just, I killed the print. Because obviously, this wasn't going to be a random, non-reproducible failure. I loaded the G-code into Simplify 3D to view it, and it showed me the Benchy with some random missing layers and travel moves to the front left corner and back. I sliced a Benchy myself using a provided PLA profile for Cura, and I set the machine to print. I left the room to grab another snack. Don't you judge my snack needs. <laughs> and I heard a very loud, high-pitched noise coming from the office. Looks like a failure during preheating. Weird. I power cycled the machine, started the print, didn't leave the room, and it started printing okay. The result was a complete benchy. It looks like... Well, it, it looks like there is room for improvement. Now that we have a complete Benchy, we can get on with the review. <laughs> the WX-1, it is 220 on the X, 220 on the Y, and 220 on the Z or Z. X and Y are on linear rails, whereas Z or Z uses a single motor and a lead screw. It's a dual geared extruder, so it grabs filament from both sides. It comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The hot end will go to 325C, that's toasty. And it's a slice engineering copperhead in there. Tom Sandladderer has an excellent video on that hot end, and I highly suggest you check it out. There's a link in the description. Heated bed gets to 120C, and it's got a BuildTac flexible steel sheet with BuildTac PEI. There are a number of printed parts on the machine. Those are PETG, and they were printed with a fuzzy skin texture. Honestly, I, I kind of like that. That's a black LCD screen from LDO up front. This machine ships fully assembled and comes with a warranty. Plus, it's open source. Open source hardware, open source software. Well, software using Marlin. I couldn't find links on their site to the GitHub repo or links to the printed models or a bomb, but, but I bet emailing them will get me what I needed. Uh, printing on this thing wasn't terrible. Printing on the included build plate with PEI gave okay results. PLA wouldn't really stick to it well unless I added glue stick. A Wexter Mini Joel and PLA with a brim just couldn't hold itself well and failed in a way that, I mean, quite honestly, I'm, I'm not even mad at. I mean, honestly, look at that. That's glorious. Other PLA prints did stick, such as this shark. So maybe I just had to keep reapplying glue stick? That seems to be counterintuitive to running a PEI sheet. PLA prints with a large surface area touching the bed were okay, like this Hulk hand. Joel smash! I did try some flowalistic mesh, but the included PEI just wouldn't hold it down, even with glue stick. So I did the only other thing I could really think of, and I swapped in a Prusa PEI sheet. And you know what? That did it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it did it well, and on the first try, and I ended up with a functional mesh 
from Flowalistic. PETG worked quite well, and the included build plate with PEI held onto that just fine, even after a super light layer of glue stick to act as a release agent. PETG and I have a history, you know. The provided Cura profile for PETG had speeds quite slow, but it was looking nice. Unfortunately, this battery dispenser had a layer shift while printing. These Alexander Chappelle camera arm parts printed well after adjusting the speeds in the profile to go a little bit faster. Gyroid infill always looks cool. While I have PETG loaded in, I wanted to try a big print. I went with Fernando Hernandez's plastic bag holder. Oh, wait, 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 Sean, go back to that video right there. Yeah, right there. Have a look at this. This is the filament sensor on the WX-1, and I love this part. It swivels! I especially liked seeing it when the parts were being printed tall. I don't think you could have the filament sensor here if it didn't swivel. Plus, it does work. I verified swapping in a Polymaker PETG when the Greengate PETG was running low. Watching new colors lay down their first layer over old colors is still one of my favorite things about 3D printing. Unfortunately, the swivel does act as a filament constraint and homing X near the top will result in strain on the filament. I can't imagine that you'll always go to this height. It's just something to remember. The print is finished and I mean, it looks okay. Looks like some of the PEI ripped up with the model. I guess I didn't get that glue stick and all the areas that needed it. Other than the strings and blobs, it does go together and you can bet I will put it to use. Functional print! I went to print something else and the SD card was corrupted at some point during the print. I took it out and reinserted it, but that didn't help. I went to view it on my computer as well and it's, it's quite corrupted at this point. Unfortunately, this means all data on the SD card is lost. This was the third time this happened during the review process. And this is where I think we should end it. Listen, Waxen has positioned this machine in a spot and at a price point that directly competes with a fully assembled Prusa i3 Mark III S and the Pulse line from Matter Hackers. Both of these machines are part of an ecosystem. Prusa has Prusa Slicer and Prusament. Matter Hackers has Matter Control and an enormous assortment of filaments that they sell and support. Both come pre-assembled and ready to print once taken out of the box. The WX-1 exists as a machine without an ecosystem, which many do, and obviously this is, this is okay. However, as a machine, the upgraded parts are fantastic. And as a whole, the machine looks killer on paper. Where it fails for me is implementation and execution. If someone were to take an Ender 3 and upgrade it with all of the parts this machine has, it wouldn't be as expensive as this machine. But unfortunately for the WX-1, I think it would be at the same level of usability. The WX-1 experience feels unfinished. And I don't believe it offers the premium experience that the price tag reflects yet. Remember, it's a 3D printer made in Boulder, Colorado by some passionate people wanting to deliver more intelligence, more speed, and more reliability. And I cannot wait to see what they do next. At this point, I think we're gonna call it good. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree with what I've said? I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comments, leave them down below. A big thanks to Wuxin for sending the WX-1 in for review. Uh, they had no input on this review and they're seeing it for the first time, just like you are. I appreciate you making this far. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more and from a safe distance, high five.